What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fistic of Series. I'm going to continue my conversation with you concerning the complete history of boxing. We talked about Willie Pep in my prior video, so let's continue the conversation with Willie Pep. Now, Willie Pep was twice suspended, once February 26, 1954, after being knocked out in two rounds with Lulu Perez. Lulu Perez was a very good amateur, but he was very green as a professional. There was no way in the world that Lulu Perez would defeat a Willie Pep. So the commissioner would find out about that rumor that took place between those two men. And the report suspected it would be a dive because the booking odds would shift from six to five to three and a half to one. Now, Willie Pep would suffer damages while flying in a four passenger private plane. And a few passengers would die. Willie Pep and another passenger would survive. Willie Pep was offered a financial settlement. He rejected the settlement because he wanted a second opportunity with the man who took the featherweight championship title away from him, and that's Joseph Sandy Sadler. What was interesting about that, Sandy Sadler would defeat Willie Pep October 29, 1948. He would take his title away from him. He would stop him in the fourth round. But what was amazing was that Willie Pep would regain his title from Joseph Sandy Sadler on the night of February 11, 1949, and 15 rounds. So not only did he reject the settlement after being involved in a plane crash where passengers died and he didn't, he would reject it. It was a very well worth investment because he would obviously earn more money as champion than he would have in a financial settlement by the insurance company. So that was a great investment of Willie Pep. It showed the testicle fortitude. It shows the testament of the man. It showed the era in which he came and what was most important to a fighter such as Willie Pep, who was an honorable man. I told you I met Willie Pep several times. He would shadow box in front of you. He would give you a hug. He would tell you so many stories. But at that point in his career, he just pretty much loved life and he wanted to exist. So he would show up in all the events. Dennis, I've seen him in. The Boxing Hall of Fame, I've seen him at. I've seen him at fights. See him often. He'd always behave the same way. Wave to the crowd and he just wanted to know that he existed. And shout out to Willie Pep. I just wanted to show you Willie Pep and Joseph Sandy Sally in their match. They were in the ring together four separate occasions. Here you have Sandy Sally and Willie Pep. The referee was Ruby Goldstein. He told me about this fight when I'd spoken with him. As he told me about the Joe Lewis and Walcott fight. And the other fight that he told me about that was really suspicious. And that was Joe Lewis and Rocky Marciano. A very good referee was Ruby Goldstein. He was in the ring with Willie Pep. I'm sorry, um... Benny Kid Perrett and Emil Griffith, he told me about that match as well. But Ruby Goldstein was a solid guy. It's a Madison Square Garden insert of Willie Pep when he was the featherweight champion of the world. But a great featherweight champion was Willie Pep during his day. Joseph Sandy Seller and Willie Pep, two great fighters. It's Joe Sandy Seller. Oh, what a punch this man was. Now, Thursday night, January 7th, 1943, 10,355 spectators watched two Cleveland, Ohio residents fight to face Gus Lester Vinch when the war ends. 23-year-old Jimmy Bivens stood 5 foot 9 inches, weighed 175 pounds, and he had a 76-inch reach. He had a record of 31 wins, 5 losses, and 11 knockouts. Now, Cincinnati Cobra, as it charged, was 21 years old. He stood 6 foot, he weighed 165 pounds, had a 76-inch reach. I'm sorry, he had a 73-inch reach at Cleveland, Ohio Arena. Yesterday, he was, had a record of 30 wins, two losses, one draw, and 15 knockouts. Charles was dropped by Bivens three times for a nine count. Charles went down in the eighth, uh, eighth round for a two count, and Charles dropped Bivens on his knee in the second round. Bivens opens up with a five-punch combination. Jimmy Bivens moves up the tournament ladder. And he faced Anton Christopheridis, February 23rd, 1943. 
March 31st of 1943, Ezra Charles was knocked out by Lloyd Marshall in 25 seconds in the eighth round. And uh, I think there was 10,539 screaming fight fans there that evening. It was in Cleveland Arena. Charles uh, Camp stated that he suffered a hip injury from the Bivens bout uh, two months earlier. And Charles was down eight times. Just about almost every round, either wobbled or hurt or he went down. 21-year-old Charles, 6 foot, 73-inch reach, 30 wins, 3 losses, 1 draw, 15 knockouts. 28-year-old Lloyd Marshall stood 5 foot, 10 inches. He had a 74-and-a-half-inch reach. He had a record of 38 wins, 7 losses, 2 draws, and 23 knockouts. Between July 27, 1942 and January 7, 1943, Charles faced Booker Beckworth twice. He knocked him out. Jose Basora, who he knocked out. Moses Ward, who knocked out. A Joey Maxim, uh, twice, unanimous decision. And he KO'd Jimmy Bivens in the eighth round. That was between January, uh, July 27, 1942 and January 7, 1943. Now, also in 1942, Charlie Brown fought 16 times for Fissy Zivic, Jimmy Leto. February 13, 1942. Big Boy Hughes from San Diego, California. They fought at the San Diego uh, Coliseum, and they knocked him out in six rounds. February 6, 1942. Holman Williams weighed 149 pounds. He was from Indianapolis at that time, and they fought at the Indianapolis Armory. Ten-round victory. Charlie Burley, he weighed 149 pounds. May 25, 1942, Ezzy Charles fighting Forbes Field in Philadelphia or Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 10 rounds, who we lose to. June 23rd, 1942, Holman Williams would defeat Crosby Field, Cincinnati. I'll see you in the next video, Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fistical Series. All great fights, all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Thanks for watching. Be well. Peace.